This video contains copyrighted material, which use, in accordance with U.S. copyright law, 17 U.S.C. section 107 fair use, is allowed for the purposes of criticism, commenting, news reporting, teaching, and or research, and is not an infringement of copyright. This is a non-profit, educational video, with the purpose of promoting social, political and economic awareness. The naked man who terrorized people at a San Francisco BART station is out of jail, but not out of trouble. Oh my God, I cannot believe that. <laughs> the video you just saw was shot last month at the 16th and Mission BART station in San Francisco. Run, run. It was a scene that no one was ready for. Ma'am, ma'am, run, ma'am, get over here, get over here. Come get in the booth, please. This scared they are staying back there then you see him go after this person and attack somebody that maintenance worker does help out in this situation took BART police seven minutes to respond in that time Perez was all over the place and many riders didn't know what was going on Still a lot of questions to be answered this morning after a naked man went on a rampage attacking one man and then biting another before deputies shot him. And overnight we got our first look at what happened from a person who caught the confrontation on his cell phone. Anderson Joseph lies dying in this Delray Beach driveway after deputies say they were forced to fire three bullets. He was terrifying. He was uh, very angry. Just seconds earlier. <laughs> An eyewitness captured this video as the man, completely naked, charges at the deputies who opened fire. <laughs> Even after being shot and tased, deputies say this guy was still fighting back. Don't move! Don't move! Don't move! <laughs> so he basically lunged after the police officers and uh, started to attack them. Robert Frisky saw the confrontation and hit record on his cell phone. He was very aggressive. He was growling. Uh, like an animal. According to deputies, this same man seen walking naked down military trail was responsible for a series of violent assaults. An elderly man was beaten so severely he was sent to the hospital. A short time later, 18-year-old Tony Green and his younger sister were attacked. And we, we were fighting and tussling and uh, he bit me. Then I started to stab him. And then he was choking me. Tony fought back, stabbing the attacker with a box cutter, but the man seemed to have superhuman strength. He took stabs in the face from me and was still going, like nothing affected him. The Palm Beach County Sheriff tells us it's still unclear if Joseph died from the shooting, drugs, or something else. A man who escaped from Mission Hospital is accused of attacking an Asheville High School student and biting two other people. All happened just after 8 o'clock this morning on McDowell Street. <laughs> Asheville City Schools say the events that played out Thursday morning near campus were unfortunate. They say a sophomore student was approached and attacked by a naked man on McDowell Street. 911, fire, police, or medical? Uh, police, there's a naked man in front of Asheville High School on the road. Uh, there was a gentleman that's running naked down McDowell Street. Yeah, they got the police on the way too. Police say Rogers bit a teacher and then bit a school resource officer. A short time later, he was taken into custody, which school officials say avoided a lockdown. Some lady just came in our store and started wrecking everything. Naked and on a rampage. Now at 11, we've got the 911 calls. McDonald's workers pleading for backup as a naked woman goes berserk. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Wendy Ryan. And I'm Javis Ayula. Right now, we're listening to frantic calls from inside that McDonald's. Yeah, the sound of employees overwhelmed by a woman out of control. She's destroying our store, bro. <laughs> she knocked each register onto the floor before going behind the counter. Police say problems with Suarez started long before as she walked from her home past Astro Skate next door. That's when the 911 calls started. She had no shirt on, no bra on. Okay, where is she at? She was walking past the street 
So she was back in the quad. Moments after that call, police say Suarez walked into McDonald's. <laughs> She's eating the ice cream right out of the machine. Look at her. Employees hid in the back and called police. What's going on there? Um, some lady just came in our store and started wrecking everything. In the background of that call, you can hear some of this damage happening. What does she look like? Uh, she's topless in her panties, um, she has blonde hair. We got McDonald's now on 66. She's inside wrecking everything. Edmonton Transit is hoping to reassure riders after video of a bizarre and seemingly unprovoked attack on the LRT went viral. The video was posted last night and already has hundreds of thousands of views. Fletcher Kent has more. It all begins with one LRT passenger recording what appears to be some unusual behavior from another rider. The strange behavior soon turns violent. Whoa. This woman turns to the man sitting next to her, grabs his throat, and hits him. Whoa, 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 chill, 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 chill. The man fights back. Fortunately, the train was pulling into a station and officers quickly jumped in. As you see on the video, I mean, the transit officers reacted quickly and appropriately and were able to ensure the safety of the passengers. This is News 8 at 10. Well, a shocking attack at a Dallas intersection when a naked man jumped onto a woman's car. Good evening, I'm John McKay. And I'm Cynthia Seguire. A witness grabbed his cell phone and caught that attack on video. He captured the attack from his apartment last Friday in Oak Cliff on Zane Boulevard just east of I-35. You can see the naked man try to climb through the sunroof. Okay, there's a guy that just got naked in the middle of the street. The man shooting this video from his Oak Cliff apartment Friday thought he was capturing the craziest thing he'd ever seen until that man came back into frame. Oh, he just jumped in these people's car. Nude with no fear at the corner of Zhang and Oakenwald, he slid arms first into the open sunroof of this woman's car. A naked man jumped in. He jumped in my car and he started attacking me. He started choking me, pulling my hair, pulling my eyes. Oh my gosh. As he clawed at her, the car slid. Oh the police were there and tried to call him off of her until they crashed. Oh my gosh. I feel more... Um, Afraid, like a prisoner. Oh my God! What do you do? Oh my God! What do you do? Oh my God! 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 And we have developing news here at 11. Frightening video just obtained by CBS2 of an attack at an Orange County intersection. A naked man tried to jump into a vehicle. Watch the video. You can then see him attack a woman and try to drag her away. Other witnesses intervened to get the man away from that woman oh and then detained oh the man God. until police arrived. Oh now, we're God. told this happened yesterday in Garden Grove near Magnolia and Westminster, but the tape is just coming to light now. That suspect was detained by Garden Grove police. Well, new at 5, the Secret Service arrested a man who was naked outside the White House. A spokesperson with the service says Michael Bichard approached officers outside the White House and took off all his clothes. As they tried to arrest him, Bashard assaulted two of the officers. He was arrested on two counts of assault and one count of indecent exposure. He was taken to the hospital to be treated for minor injuries he received when he attacked the officers. To the police department and to my Heavenly Father for being there for me today. Ramona Villarell is very seriously thanking God she gets to drive home tonight. She watched as a man squared off with police right in front of her office building. First tased three times. Then police say an officer fired one shot to his chest. Had him apprehended on the ground and he was still fighting him even after he had been shot. Shocking, but nothing compared to what she'd seen seconds before. That man terrorizing the medical testing center where she works beating his his chest and being crazy outside of our window where he disrobed took all his clothes off and threw him down the stairwell it felt like they were being held hostage until he finally went outside where police were waiting so it was a very surreal hard day today flesh-eating monsters threatening to devour each other alive I'm talking about the Pentagon's newly revealed plan for the zombie apocalypse I repeat the Pentagon has a zombie plan. Now, they get that it's hip silly. It opens with a disclaimer saying, while it's not a joke, it was for training purposes, but still, zombie plan. 31 pages of it, to be exact, written in military speak.
listing eight different types of zombies to combat. Pentagon security is absolutely impenetrable. Uh, and as a matter of fact, it would be impossible for zombies to actually... <laughs> wait, so, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait. Jim, Something's... keep your brain okay. safe. Oh wow! Uh, I, I don't know what the I don't know what the deal there was, <laughs> Ronan, but uh, it's called Com Plan 88. 888811. It's called Control Zombie Dominance and Survival Plan. Crisis Action Plan to eradicate the zombie threat and protect humankind. This plan was actually drawn up uh, by the military strategic command and it runs through several zombie scenarios that could threaten the political and economic stability in the United States. and that was heroic. We practiced to this not more than three weeks ago. We took every one of our officers, our patrol officers, and a couple of hundred officers from the Los Angeles Police Department, and we practiced the exact scenario that played out today. We played out today, and I, and I was talking to the officers. And we practiced the exact scenario that played out today. That's how zombie can't go. I think. Maybe. Zombies can obviously walk the walk. Can you talk the talk? Let's hear the zombie noise. Okay, we have all these people getting into the zombie spirit and volunteering to participate in a government zombie drill. Supposedly, the drills are going to protect the homeland. That's the U.S. Republican Senator Tom Coburn triggering our Washington Watchdog Report and ABC's Jonathan Carl has what is in his report. The zombie apocalypse. This isn't some really bad B movie. It's an actual scene from the 2012 Counterterrorism Summit attended by law enforcement officials around the country. Summit tickets, $1,000 a pop, paid for with your tax dollars. The zombies look scary, but organizers say the skit was solely to add levity to an otherwise serious meeting on protecting the homeland. What people are they going to be shooting? Are they going to be shooting civilians? Injured people? People infected with some kind of biological warfare that makes them act like zombies? With the history of our government drills in our country in the last few years, we really need to take this a little more seriously and do some investigating on this. There are certain areas of the brain that in fact um, lead you to become violent I have in front of me a book published by NATO, North Atlantic Treaty Organization, called The Biology of Aggression, which is, um, let's see, it's, it's over uh, 600 pages long. They're actually researching to see what areas of the brain they can affect 
to make people violent, and they're using rabies virus to do so. Violent. Times when the guy just stood his head up like that with a piece of flesh in his mouth and growled like... He has been identified by the medical examiner as Rudy Eugene. The guy was like tearing him to pieces with his mouth. So I told him, get off. The 31-year-old was shot and killed by a Miami police officer on Saturday as he chewed off the cheeks, ears, nose, and an eye of a homeless man. Eugene's rap sheet includes charges for marijuana possession, trespassing, and battery, but nothing that would indicate he could be behind the violence on the side of the MacArthur Causeway. The aftermath was caught by a Miami Herald surveillance camera and a crime scene picture obtained by 7 News, but too graphic to air. Pleased to report to all of you that he's uh, feeling well. He's uh, eating. He's walking around with physical therapy. He's talking with us. Surgeons described the progress of Ronald Popo, a homeless man who was the victim of a gruesome face-eating attack. They also released pictures of the 65-year-old, who remains in hospital following the attack on a bridge in downtown Miami, which showed the extent of his injuries. When Mr. Popo arrived, he really couldn't make out his identity or what his facial features were before the trauma. In a second photo, Popo is seen walking with help from hospital staff. Already grisly murder takes an even more grisly twist. A college student tells police he killed a housemate and then ate part of the victim's heart and brain. WJC is live in Edgewood right now. Mike Kelgan with even more stunning details on this crime. Mike? Vic, police here in Harford County say they have never seen a case of cannibalism, never seen a case like this, a stunning crime, and they say they have no reason to believe the suspect is lying about what he said he did. Investigators say 21-year-old college student Alexander Kanua killed his roommate, then ate his heart and parts of his brain, cutting off his head and hands and storing them inside his family's townhouse on Terrapin Terrace in Harford County. I don't want to make speculation here. It's very early in the investigation. Um, we have a lot of follow-up to do. I'm sorry to bother you. We're Family members there declined to speak about the chilling crime. Police say Kinua's brother found the remains and his father called police. Authorities later found body parts there and in a dumpster at a church nearby. This was a very difficult investigation. I also want to thank the FBI who assisted us in this investigation. But what's the motive? Police haven't ruled out anything, including drugs. They say Kinua, while cooperative, confessed but would not reveal why he did it. According to published reports, he recently posted statements about cults, ethnic cleansing, and school shootings online. Okay, the man who turned cannibal on his roommate was online talking about school shootings. Now tell me there's not a connection here. WJZ obtained the missing persons report on the victim, 37-year-old Kujo Agyekodi, who vanished last week. Both he and Kinua attended Morgan State University in Baltimore. That's also where Kinua was charged just days ago. Did you see that? Did you see the banner? Here, take a look at it. Okay, this is Occupy Freedom. I'm David Laurie Vanderbeek, the next governor of the state of Nevada. In this segment, I'm going to talk about the FEMA zombie airborne rabies flu update. Uh, I'll talk about your the CIA just declassified your government inve invented weaponized polio over 10 years ago and the uh, future of bioweapons. Um, we're seeing the merger of law enforcement and medical care, so doctors are being pushed in state laws. State laws are being passed across this country so that doctors are expected to release your health records to law enforcement. So it's going to be mental health that's used to enforce gun confiscation. Do you understand that? There we go. It always leads back to gun control now, doesn't it? All the mass shootings, all of the drills. Every single time Obama comes out right afterwards demanding more gun control. Researching to see what areas of the brain they can affect to make people violent and they're using rabies virus to do so. You've been keeping track of what the CIA and the Defense Department have been doing for a long time as far as using us as guinea pigs for mind control and other types of horrible things they have in mind for us and the rest of the people in the world. What are some of them? Well, uh, it started out basically with the CIA doing experimentations on their own men to discover if they could get rid of uh, agents who were going to quit the department and still had classified information. So they utilized 
different types of drugs and pain and hypnosis and electric shock to try and get the guys to forget. Then they also did experimentations to using different chemicals to see if you can induce a person to commit a crime or induce him to do that or to do this. Um, of course, the CIA claimed that it didn't carry it through. Um, the documentation we got was actually that they did that. Then we came across the overall project called MK Ultra. Its earlier code name was Artichoke, and that included 149 subprojects. 149. Yeah. And those subprojects range from what I just described to open air testing in the United States, the experimentation on prisoners, experimentation on soldiers, experimentation on college students. Uh, um, would these people know they were being experimented on and gave their approval? No, except for the quote-unquote volunteer and <laughs> voluntary army soldiers. Oh, yeah. And the, the way the volunteer army program worked is it started in 1959, and the guys were just told that they would be doing experimentation on new weapons, right? And then they'd get to Fort Detrick, Maryland, where the experimentation was done and find out that they were going to be doing it on drugs and chemicals. But they were never told what they would be exposed Public Law 105-85. You can type it into your Google search and pull up all the information you want on it. It's, it's right there for everyone to see. It states that the U.S. government can test biological and chemical tests on U.S. citizens. It also states that subjects must give consent. But, since this is a public document that was published for the public to see, and the public is not objecting, legally, that is considered giving consent. So, whether you realize it or not, ignorance of the law has caused you and me to consent to biological and chemical testing on us and our families, our children, our grandkids. I've pictures right now the Dobbins Air Reserve Base uh, outside of Atlanta, Georgia, and you're looking at a plane on the tarmac there because it's believed, and CNN is confirming, on board is that American doctor who's been transported from West Africa who is now an Ebola patient here in Atlanta to receive tra treatment the first time ever. Dr. Sanjay Gupta is with us now, and this really is a first because while the Emory University uh, Hospital feels it's equipped to deal with a highly contagious patient, patient like this, it's the first time they're actually treating somebody who has Ebola. We're out here today at the Georgia Guidestones in Elberton, Georgia. It's about 70 miles outside of Atlanta. And as you can see here, it's 17 foot tall, strange granite monument that has 10 guidelines printed on it or etched into it about what to do after the shit hits the fan, as it were, uh, and the apocalypse comes. The first one here at the top is the one that is the most controversial. Maintain humanity under 500 million in perpetual balance. we once were, we are no longer a Christian nation. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. You know, it's, excuse me, it's interesting that people are watching the total destruction of the global economy. So they'll pass this rule, it's believe it or not called martial law. Pretty impressive, a display of international military might. Thousands of men and women from several different countries all landed on Camp Pendleton. The FEMA camp bill allows the government to run at least six military installations when a national emergency is declared. Oh! 